Yellow flag is a target. Okay. Like that one. I like a lot of parts, a lot of things in your swing, like I always have. All right, you've got a, an awesome pivot on the way back, so your arms get super high and you have a huge turn. On the way down, you really do work your body well into the golf ball. Um, we get a little too kind of crouched or narrow through the shot, mm -hmm. and that's usually a sign that the golfer's trying to overpower things with their arms, yeah. or we're just not, there's just not an understanding of getting tall toward the finish. So when I see you kind of come through here and your arms are still going up before you've stood up, right, that means that somewhere along the line, usually somewhere down here, your arms are trying to swing themselves toward the target. And my demonstration will kind of talk about all those pieces to it. But the big thing that I'd like to get to today is trying to get you taller and more forward relative to where the golf club is. So mm -hmm. a sequencing thing. So, like I said, this looks pretty good, big turn. We're gonna try and get some weight off your front foot. I think that early in the back swing, you load up on the front side a little too much. So I want you to feel like your front foot gets weightless. Kind of my toe, is the toe coming off? Kind of it can, yeah, you can lift your whole foot off the ground if you want, but there's just, there's too much weight there. Okay. So as you come into the ball, we don't, like you're already forward a little bit too early. So we don't quite get the momentum that we need. And then here, so when your arms and club are even with the ground, this is where I want you to feel like you're standing tall. So your right leg's got to get straighter, the right shoulder's got to get higher. You have to feel like you push your stomach a little more toward the target to get that extension piece. So when I'm here, I should be like this. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. So, you know, we talk fancy terms in golf, like right there where your arms even with the ground, right? Um, like P8 or P9 area. When at P8 or P9, we want to try and feel like we're perfectly tall and that from the knees all the way to the shoulders are square to the target. But if the body's back this way, then usually that means that something tried to speed up this way and your body stopped to stabilize that. So I think that the big pieces here are trying to feel first that you're weightless on the front foot until, well, until the club starts changing direction. So I would say that when you, when you take the club back to about here, it's going to be 100% on your back foot and zero on your front foot. Okay. That's the plan well, right off right the bat. There? Yeah, yeah, by this early in the back swing. Okay. And then from there, we'll see how you react with the weight from here. I think you'll be pretty good with it. And then the idea here is to try and feel like once the club gets down to about your right leg, or your hands get down to your right leg, no more arm speed. I want the arms to decelerate from here to the rest of the swing. Okay. Right, so arm speed in the swing is here. It's a vertical force just right to there. Okay. But the rest of the game is deselling the arms to allow the speed to transfer up to the club. All right? And I'm, I'm deaccelerating by just using, using my body more. Yeah, right. so once the arms kind of get down to here, the way that the club goes through the ground, out of the ground, and into the finish is you getting taller with your body that way. And that pulls it around the corner. That first piece in the backswing is really just going to feel as though that once the club kind of gets back to about there, you know, waist height, I've got nothing going here. But for the rest of the swing, as I go up to the top, my weight does go to the left because as soon as the club gets to that spot where it changes direction, that's when we fall on the front foot. So it's like it literally is a move off the front foot and fall onto it right there. And that's kind of the timing to the, to the weight distribution. But when we start to get here and start working down, I like your arm speed through here, but let's kind of decelerate to let the club kick out. Right? And as you decelerate the arms, that's going to give you a chance to feel like you can push higher and more forward. So from where you're standing, I want the right leg to make the left leg disappear. Follow me? So it's like you can see my left side until I move my right side forward, and now I've displaced that. Now you only see my right, not my left. And that's kind of what we're going to see on the video. So the, the sequencing part of this is just trying to make sure that the arms don't pass my body. So if I had like a midline on my body here, I want to try and feel as though that my arms don't get on my left side. 
until I get to that P9 spot. That's kind of where they catch up, right? Well, I'll do it this way. The arms catch up to my middle, and then from here on in, that's when they go to the left. But if my arms pass my midline here, right, that's pulling things inward, and that's it's kind of like just sitting in a chair, right? So we want to feel like we're jumping out of the chair. Stand right here for me. So off the front foot early, and then from there trying to feel as though that you can get tall that way with the club and hands still low. So really tall with the right side, pushed forward more as well with the lowest grip finish. Okay, and as the speed to your stand up improves, that's when the club starts to look like it has a full swing look. But I didn't pull my arms up to get there. They got there because I stood up with some speed. Okay? Your turn. Yep. Show me again. So if I were to stand here, I don't want to get hit by your club. I want you tall and forward, but don't hit me with, with your arms and club. Yeah. Okay. Turn more. Belly out more. There. So if we can feel like, first of all, that this stays below the handle for a little while, then the speed's going to kick it up that way. Show me again. There. That one. Good. So what makes the club swoosh through into the finish is you getting this way better. But in order to get there, we needed that, we needed you to have more weight on the back foot so that you have something to push off of to get here, right? But if all the weight's already here, it's hard to get my right side through because I've got nothing to push off from. Yep. That's it. And we want to try and feel that your arms don't go too far to your left and they don't go too high. Those are your pulls and your draws. Right? It might feel like from, from this perspective here that when you finish, your arms are even in front of your right shoulder rather than your left shoulder. Right? Yeah, so you've got your shoulders and your hips equal to the target, not over-rotated. Cool, hit one. The lower you finish with the grip, the more divot you'll take. The more divot you take, the less chance you have of hitting it left. Okay. All right. So I don't want your arms or club to get to this. It's just on your heel line. I'm going to go a little further back than that, actually. There we go. Okay. So give me a practice swing. Swing through, but keep your arms away from that. There. That's way better. Yeah. So that kind of encourages the decel. Nice. So the arms act like a wood chopper. They go up, they go down. They don't go, they don't go across my feet toward the target and they don't go up this way, like in terms of what I'm trying to do, like the speed to them. My speed is all down here and then they stop. As soon as they stop and the club kicks out, right, and then that gives us a chance to turn into the finish. Yeah. Nice shot. A little simpler? Yeah. Feels a lot shorter. Perfect. Love that. And you'll watch almost everybody that hits approach shots, you know, anything from say 180 and in this week at the US Open, like all those guys finish way lower with their hands. With the driver, because it's on the tee and they're using their pivot even harder, then the arms kind of fold up, like wrap all the way around like Rory, but you'll rarely see Rory hit anything inside 160 with his hands wrapped around his head. Right? It's all like Tommy Fleetwood DJ style, like really low. Yeah, that's just the deacceleration after you're pushing out. For sure. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice shot. 
So this would be a good exercise or a good drill to do all the way up to say six iron, all right? And then when we start to practice with the longer clubs, that's when we're gonna let the club rehinge a little more. So the club head finishes high, but I still want the grip to stay at like chest level. Good. So really focus on the weightless of the foot on this one and hit the shot. Just one thought right now. Good. That's going to change your distance. That's your biggest distance finder right there. Getting weightless on that front foot and then stomping on it. You got it. Yep. And that's what's getting me to come down like that. Yes. So not only will it get the club to go down, but the fact that you're rising up is going to get the club out of the divot. Very good. I love it. And I'm expecting a little more height from your shots today too. So higher, straighter, you said shorter, more powerful, all that fun stuff. Good. Yep. Really good. So after you've taken some really good divots like those last few all the way up to six iron, then we're going to talk about a little more speed and we'll get into the driver in like an hour. Okay, cool. Yes. Cool. pick up the tempo a little bit. Like once you get to the top, which is really good here, it's just there for too long. Okay. Get out of it. That's it. And the lower your hands, your arms finish, the lower your hands are, the less chance you have of going left into that stick. Still quicker tempo. Yep. Yeah, get the club back to the ball in a shorter period of time. There you go. Good. And really feel like at the end of your swing that your elbows don't get soft. Push them down. Yeah, good. There you go. What was the ball flight on that one? It sounded good. If it's low, we need to get, uh, if I refer to tempo speeding up, we need to get you into this position sooner. There you go, good. And keep the arms down, let them push right down into the divot. They don't go past the divot, they don't go forward, they don't go up again. Right down, so right from here, down into the ground as the body stands tall. So I'm feeling I'm kind of like pushing the arms down. Yeah, you're trying to smash the club into the ground and leave it there. And then I'm coming up at the same time. And that's what'll take the club out of the ground even though your hands are intending to keep it in the ground. Wicked. Good job, way better tempo on that. Hey, way to go. Come look at that one.
There, nice. So we're going to use this little white thing here as a mark. I want your hands to finish like in, like here or below. Okay. If the hands finish higher than that, we push them forward too far. Yeah, they went that way too much, not that way enough. Nice. Cool. Good dig down. So heavier divot, higher flight. So normally when we hit down steeper into the ground, it's because we de-lofted it. If you got steeper with more loft, that's awesome. Good, really good. So we're gonna keep working on that and we're gonna get a little more height by once you finish facing the target that the mid pushes through more and you lean back. That's gonna add height to our shot. But that's, no, no, that's, that's where I'm gonna go in about an hour with it. I wanna stick with what you're doing right here. Speeding up the tempo, finishing with the arms a little lower or not speeding them up as hard. Your weight transfer looks really good. You're not standing on the front foot. You're really moving off well. Good, really nice. So you've got the arm motion like very, very good. Once the arms do that and the body starts to stand tall, almost like the shoulders back up, it's gonna launch it into the clouds with, with a punch shot feel. And what I'm doing now is I'm just coming in like this, right? Yeah, so when you come in this way, you've kind of got your chest a little bit forward of your hips. So you've got like a forward leaning spine angle. When that spine angle tilts back that way, it launches things up. No, it's a little, because you're not going into the ground, this is where we can actually get a little more speed to the arms and stuff. I would just say that the biggest thing is trying to get into your finish and then staying there. But sometimes you get into that so aggressive that you bounce out of it. Yeah, we've got to stick that finish. When the front leg moves a little bit like that, the whole path of the swing goes off. So forward and tall with the body, still shorter, lower with the arms. And try not to let them keep going, like floating here. Actually feel like they stop. That's what's going to let the club kick out. So it might feel like you finish this way. Hands really low, club has to almost flip more through the shot because when the grip pulls through, that's what's keeping the face open to the right. So stopping the arms allows the club to release or we, it's a, or we flip it. And in your world, flipping's a good thing. 
That was different. Good for you. Yeah. Earlier with the flip or earlier with the stopping of the arms. So at that swing, just to give you another way to put this, the grip moved too fast relative to the club head through the ball. So the grip was closer to the target than the head. And when that happens, the face is always pointed right. Yes. So over accelerating the grip leads to your push. And if you muscle it hard at the end, it could also lead to a big hook, right? The last minute twist of the shaft could send that thing hard left. So feel like the arms de decelerate sooner gives you time to stand up into your finish better. That's different. So I think one of the reasons why the loss of balance was happening is because the arms were speeding up all the way to here and it kind of threw you back. But if the arms stopped down here by the ball, now we have way more balance through there. That was different. Give me another one. Good. Good. So let me kind of show you a little bit here. Stand right here in front. So as I mentioned, the fault being that the arms pull the grip for too far, leave the face open. So it almost is going to feel like it's this action, that my arms, my hands stop back there to let the club head kick out. Right? And if I can, yeah, if I can hit the brakes like that, then the club head not only turns over, right, squares itself up to your path, but it also speeds the club head up. Like with the irons, I was doing the stick in the club head and extend at the same time, but this was just like, just extend and just let the arms release through. I like that. Yep. Yep. Oh, well done. That was ripped. So that would be the highest we'd want to go with the shot. See, can you hit one 10 feet lower? And all that is, is making your body turn and stand, get in, in front of that club head longer. That's nice. And so these are the shots that we typically see pros hit into the green. Like Rory hit this, I don't know how many times on Sunday at Glen Abbey, like pitching wedge that went like 50 feet in the air, right? And it's so controlled because the club head is so far behind the body rotation, it doesn't have a chance to change its orientation, right? The club head's the most stable when it's behind the body turn. The second that it passes the body turn is when it changes. It adds loft, starts to open up. Hey, nice. So you'll get the feeling in your hands of squaring up the face to send it online. If the, if the ball starts a little bit too far right or too far left, so a little low or a little high, just get a better feeling of where the, your hands are relative to the club face. It's, I don't want to say it's a steer. Arms are hitting the big stick I had there. Yeah. 